Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Dr. Efi Papa Evangelou. I am one of the lecturers, part of the clinical pharmacology team. And together uh, here with us, we have also one of our students, Diana, and she will give you a brief uh, talk about her experience in the course after I finish this admissions talk. So today I'm going to talk to you about mainly three things. So I'm going to give you an overview of our course. So first I'm going to talk to you about generally what is clinical pharmacology in case you've never heard of that before. And then I'm going to give you a brief overview of our course and what types of modules we teach and how we do examinations and so on. And towards the end, I'm going to talk to you about prospective careers and careers that currently our alumni students are following. So let's start first with what is clinical pharmacology. So clinical pharmacology is the science of developing new medicine to be used in the healthcare system. For example, as you can see in the diagram on your right side, when we are studying different disease mechanisms, then we can identify new targets for these diseases, which is part of drug discovery. And then we move on to what we call preclinical studies, where we explore the efficacy and the toxicity of these new drugs in preclinical models, which can be set, etc. And then we can move on to first in human trials, where we allow to try the, uh, the drugs for the first time in humans uh, to see if they're toxic. And then we can presume to different stages of clinical trials where we test the efficacy of these drugs and the patient respond to these drugs. And once these drugs have passed clinical trials, then this can be approved and be prescribed to patients. And uh, clinical pharmacology involves uh, various terminologies that I'm going to mention in my next few slides, such as drug development, uh, adverse effects, side effects, it has to do with patients, and you are going to learn in this course about drug and drug interactions and pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics, as I'm going to show you in the next slides. So where does clinical pharmacology fit? within the healthcare and science system. So clinical pharmacology sa sits somewhere in the middle. So in terms of science, we have the pharmacologists, which are the people that discover the new drugs and chemists as well. And on the other side of the healthcare system, we have um, medicine, the doctors that diagnose diseases and prescribe medicines and the pharmacy that will dispense those uh, drug treatments for different diseases. So clinical pharmacology sits between pharmacology and medicine. So it is part of science, but is uh, directly related to patients and how drugs interact with patients. So let's focus now about the specific BSc in clinical pharmacology. The aim of our degree is to develop graduates that are ready for the work environment or graduates that are ready to do further studies in the fields of drug development and the healthcare system. And how, what you as graduates are expecting from a university course, of course. Of course, you want to graduate and have a good degree that can be helpful. And of course, you want to graduate and be able to find a job immediately for some of you or be able to continue study and accept into other courses, such as uh, other healthcare science modules like medicine or do science uh, master's degrees like drug development or in uh, master's degrees and PhDs in specific fields of studies. So, and you also want a course where the people in the course team care about the students and listen to the student voice. And you also want to have fun and make new friends and learn how to do team working. So this is what we're here to help you with in clinical pharmacology degree. So let's have a look at what we learned during the different semesters of our course. In the first year, 
we have a lot of introductory modules where we're going to teach you basic scientific knowledge, uh, either in um, physiology or uh, cell biology, but also basic concepts of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and so on, which I'm going to explain in the next few slides what they are. And um, for semester one, fin A finishes with a project, a small writing project, so you can start developing your writing skills. And in semester B, we talk about different drug targets and, uh, and uh, more specific diseases. And in year two, the first semester, we continue our exploration of different diseases and different drug targets for these particular diseases. And in the second semester, you are going to perform a laboratory or uh, data or a patient-based project first, and then you're going to go on and do some work experience, either in industry or within the NHS. Mm -hmm. And uh, after your second year, you have the option of joining an optional professional year where you can work in industry, get paid by the industry and build up your CV. And this is optional, as I said, and you don't necessarily have to participate in it, but you have the possibility if you want to do that year, to take that year out of uni and then come back and continue in the third year, or you can continue directly from year two to year three. In year three, we're doing hot topics and hot topics about pharmacology, novel targets and novel treatments, new technologies. And you also do a writing project to further advance your writing skills. And the last part of year three, you are choosing three of your favorite modules uh, and uh, you explore this in a more advanced level. So our modules in this course are six to begin with. The first module is Fundamentals of Science, as is highlighted in your screen with red. So this is about physiology and cell biology and the basic disease understanding. The second module is called pharmacodynamics. And pharmacodynamics is the module of, uh, that explores of how drugs work. So it will describe different mechanisms of action of different drugs. What happens when the drugs enter their body? Where do they bind? What happens to them? And the third uh, module is called pharmacokinetics. And this is how our body interacts with the drug, how we absorb the drugs, how we metabolize the drugs, and how we excrete drugs. The fourth module is drug development, where you're going to learn all about preclinical and clinical trials and how we uh, um, lead from a new target, a new drug, a new possible treatment, and how we develop it until we get this drug approved and into the healthcare system. The fifth module is called Drugs in Healthcare, where you will learn how we administer those drugs in different patients and um, anything that has to do with uh, interactions between drugs in, inside the patient and um, more information about the health care system, how we administer drugs, how we uh, prescribe drugs and so on. And the sixth module is data and statistics, but it's not generic data and statistics. This is specific for clinical pharmacologists and you're going to be analyzing, for example, data from clinical trials and so on to help you later on with your degree. So these are the six modules. And our um, curriculum runs as a, what we call it the, uh, the toothpaste curriculum because all these modules are parallel, as you will see in the next slide, and uh, they're running together in the first three semesters. And in semester one, as I said, is the introductory, the basic concept. And semester two focuses in different diseases, uh, including heart disease, inflammation, infections, like virus and so on, and bacterial infections, and metabolism through our liver, for example. And in the second year, the toothpaste curriculum is still running, and it focuses on central nervous system diseases, cancer, and also uh, the life cycle of the human being, including how um, we reproduce, and uh, including diseases about aging and uh, elderly diseases. And in the third year, as I said, you're going to do some diseases and you're going to do hot drugs, very recently approved drugs, very advanced technologies. And then you pick three of these colorful uh, modules here to do it in a more advanced le uh, level in your last semester before you graduate. Now, what skills you're going to learn in this degree? There is a variety of skills, and that will include uh, skills uh, regarding clinical trials, 
how we set those up, basic uh, measurements like heart rates, uh, breathing rate, and so on. And you're going to learn different laboratory skills of how we investigate drug efficacy. For example, you're going to learn how to manage different data sets. You're going to gain presentation skills and team working skills uh, by activities that you have to do in your small groups. And you're going to build up a skills portfolio with a variety of things that you can use later on for your further careers and you can add them to your CVs. And how do we learn these skills during the, the curriculum? So in the first year, you will have alternate weeks with clinical and laboratory practical skills and uh, mm -hmm. with an activity, a team activity uh, called the Dragon's Den in the end of semester one, uh, semester eight. And in the second year, again, you're going to have alternate clinical and laboratory skills. And in the second semester of year two, you're going to go on and do your own laboratory project. And then you're going to do a write-up and presentation on that project. And then you're going to continue with the work experience, either in industry or the NHS, as I said. And then you're going to give us a presentation about this project. And in the third year, you're going to do more clinical skills and data skills, but also communication skills. And you're going to finish by examination of those skills and at this point your skills portfolio is being signed off and finishes. And how it all fits together. If you see in the picture in the next slide, you will see an example of our timetable. And as I said before, we have our six modules with the different colors, as you can see on the right hand side. And we have our skills portfolio marked in yellow here. So we have three days on site. For example, in year one, these are Monday, Thursday and Friday, where you come on campus and you do either clinical skills, laboratory skills and live sessions. We have one day that we have online teaching, either pre-recorded sessions or live sessions, like this is Tuesday. And on Wednesdays is a free day for you to catch up with your studies, to revise, but also there are occasional pharmacy visits, as this can only host a small number of students, but that will happen once or twice during your semester. And we also have two types of small groups that you can see here. The first one is called hubs. Uh, so this is run uh, and you have your personal skills, your personal tutor at your tutor of your hubs. And you're going to have a small group of 10 to 15 people. And you're going to do different activities and learn different skills, such as presentation skills and team working skills. And then we have another small group called DBL on Friday afternoons in year one. And DBL is, is stands for drug-based learning. This is a problem-based learning um, small group. You're going to have a different tutor for that. And again, in small groups of 10 to 15 people, you're going to go through live patient scenarios and you're going to learn about different drugs and how these are used in the healthcare system. Now, how do we do our teaching and learning? So we provide different lectures, obviously, either pre-recorded or live in person or live online. We teach you data handling. We have different workshops and careers events. We do practicals for both clinical and laboratory skills. We have the small groups that are called drug-based learning and hubs, as I said before. And where do we learn on this? Our learning online environment is called Canvas. And as you can see in the next slide, every page, uh, every, uh, every module has its own page in its own folder on Canvas. And there you will find all your learning objectives. You will find the session, uh, the slides for each session, for the lectures, the scenarios you, you, that you need for your um, small groups. You will find uh, the recordings of the sessions, of the lectures. And you're also going to have your home page where it's uh, the clinical pharmacology year one, for example, the, for the first year, where we put all the generic information about assessment and where to find different resources and so on. And you're going to have a page for your skills portfolio when you can catch up with your clinical skills and with your laboratory skills and find all the information and protocols you need there. And also on Canvas, you will be able to check different uh, your grades, and the marking of assessments, you can uh, submit your assessments there online and you can keep an eye of the progress of your portfolio. 
Now let's talk about assessment because I know you're worried about exams. So how do exams happen in our course? In the first year, you only have exams at the end of year, uh, at the end of the year. That's around June, July. And the first year, because it's your introductory year to the university, the exams do not count for your degree classification. However, you need to pass your exams for each module to progress to year two. The pass grade is 40% in each module. And also, your grade for each module does not only come for the end of year exams, but it also comes from something we call in-course assessment. These are mini assessments such as assignments, essays, data sheets, and also weekly quizzes that can uh, contribute 50% to your module grade. In your second year, because as I said, in semester two of second year, you need to go and do your projects. The exams are in the end of, some of the first semester here highlighted with a star. The second year, again, the passing rate is 40% and the mark contrib is, is uh, consisting of 50% from your exam and 50% from your in-course assessment as usual. But this year counts 30% towards your degree classification. And in year three, you have your project that is marked and contributes to one of the modules and you also have exams in the end of semester one and then in the end of semester two for your exams modules for your advanced modules and uh, again the passing rate is 40 percent and 50 percent is in course assessment 50 percent is exams but the last year when you are more mature and you're ready to graduate and you're doing your advanced modules that you chosen you really like, that year counts 70% towards your degree classification. What support are you going to get from us? And this is here different pictures of our current team. And you can see on the top left are two course directors, Emma and Nian. So I know we can see in the next picture is Errol, which is our course administrator. And then we have a variety of lecturers and tutors uh, that will support you based on the various modules they teach. You're also going to, we have year leads. For example, I'm year two lead myself. And you're going to have different university support systems to help you. For example, there is a disabilities office, uh, there is a counseling team and so on. And you're going to have your small uh, group tutor, which is also your personal tutor, and you're going to meet them weekly. So hopefully you can bond with them from early on. And you're going to have a different tutor for your drug-based learning groups. You can also have a different tutor when you start your projects and a work experience tutor when you go on work placement in industry. And you, can, you will also receive career support through a variety of careers events. And now let's talk about what you can do after you finish clinical pharmacology. So after you finish, you can choose to either do, go and do a master's or PhD degrees and continue your learning, or you can choose to undergo some graduate apprenticeships that a lot of our students choose currently, or you can choose to enter the healthcare system and become a doctor, a nurse, a paramedic further on, or um, a physician's associate, or you can choose to work directly, especially in industry, as a clinical research associate, for example, or a research co coordinator or a data management, or you can work in marketing and sales, you can become a clinical pharmacology in uh, some company, or you can work for uh, the AMHRI and the regulatory affairs offices, or you can work as a laboratory scientist or a laboratory technician. And if you can see in the next slide, what are our alumni currently doing? So, uh, as you can see in this work light, a lot of our students are currently decided to go and join the workforce after they graduate. So, they became uh, MHRI signal assessors or clinical trials associates. But a lot of other students chose to do different MSCs, such as in nursing, in clinical drug development, in global health in drug discovery, in neuroscience, and many others. Some of them chose to enter a medicine and or become physician's associates. So there is a variety of careers, either in the healthcare system or in the science system, where you can continue to either study or join the workforce. And our uh, 
course, we are proud to say that is designed and delivered with employers. And here I have some examples that our students are either currently working with after they graduated or uh, companies that offer placements for our students. And these include LabCorp and Fortria, the NHS, as I said, AstraZeneca, uh, Richmond, Affinity, Niche, and uh, others among these. So by the time you finish your degree, we want, as, we said, as I said in the beginning, to prepare work-ready graduates. And that's why you're going to do a different careers events throughout uh, your years. You're going to do six weeks of work experience in the end of your uh, second semester in year two. You also have the choice, as I said previously, to have an optional professional year in a company. And you're going to gain a different variety of employment skills. And uh, you're going to advance in some of your modules and gain a bit more knowledge there. Uh, and we also uh, provide careers advice and we have have external lecturers from industry, for example, that they can give you some insights of what you can do after you graduate your degree. So by the time you finish your degree, you already have work experience, you've gained a lot of general uh, generic skills, laboratory skills, clinical skills, and you have some other optional stuff you can choose to do, such as summer internships, including the touring team where you study abroad. And you can also join conferences and papers where you can present the data from your research projects. As I said, you have the professional optional training year and uh, you can win awards and recognitions for example, if you're top of your class. And uh, in this slide, I would like to show you the student feedback we receive from the National Student Survey showing in dark blue this year and the Student Experience Survey. And in yellow is just the benchmark values for other pharmacology and toxicology and pharmacy courses. As we can see, our course scores more than 85% in different aspects with an overall a student positivity rating of 95.8% and also um, student voice in the NSS uh, survey, uh, the, which is the last um, set, uh, scored 100%, we, which means we want to make our course better and we pay attention and we listen to our students and together we try to make improvements every year. In the next slide, I have some um, quotes from uh, directly from these surveys uh, that uh, show some student feedback. I will leave them there for you to read. I'm not going to read all of them uh, for the interest in the interest of time. I just would like to pick a random one and read this to you. Staff always listen to our opinions and concerns. Always made it interesting. Clinical pharmacology was experienced not like any other degree. And another one. I enjoy the engagement of the staff to their students. We really felt listened to and respected. So I'm not going to read all the rest, but I hope you have some time to read them if you like. Before I continue to my next slide. So this is our website for our course where you can find more information. And uh, I will pass on uh, to Diana now uh, after I stop sharing my screen. And uh, I will try afterwards. We have a Q&A session where I will try to answer uh, most of your questions from the chat. Thank you very much for listening. Diana, would you like to turn on your camera? Thank you, Effie. Hello, everyone. My name is Diana, and I am in my third and final year of study of clinical pharmacology. And Effie has nicely given a scope of what clinical pharmacology entails, so I won't really go into depth in that. But what I will do is share with you my experiences of my student experience and what I love about St George's. So I'm very keen to share this with you all today. So to begin with, I think a question I get asked a lot is, will you ultimately end up working in a pharmacy after this degree? And my answer is always no, but to a certain extent. So as Effie had shown, there are many opportunities out there that you can get involved in. So whether you want to work in a lab or clinical trial setting or work in the industry, there is something for you. And entering this course 
I had the mindset that I'd go into medicine straight after this degree. But now I have just completely changed and I see so many different doors opening for me. And I have many friends outside this course who are studying medicine and they say that they struggle with pharmacology the most. They find that it's the most challenging module of their syllabus. So I guess if you consider studying this course and then going into medicine, you're already in good stead for studying medicine in the future because you will have a greater understanding of drug discovery and treatment than any other medical student out there. So yes, I can assure you that there are many opportunities other than pharmacy and medicine. So as a clinical pharmacology student, we typically follow the journey of a drug, how it's made from a lab to how it's turned into a drug and ultimately reaches the patient on the other side in a clinical setting, which I think is very fascinating because you get to see the magic take the fall from day one. And this is something that many other healthcare sectors don't get to see in great detail. And I think it's really special to be part of a process where you will know that a drug can potentially benefit a patient one day. And I think it's very satisfying in that sense. Um, what I love about the course as a whole is that it's designed to make us work ready. So in whatever aspect you choose to take part in, in the drug pipeline, you'll have opportunity to communicate with patients or trial medical writing and learn how to uh, design this in a way that it will make patients understand what you're trying to say. And in the position I'm in right now, I feel more confident because I have this skills portfolio ready to be showcased. So that's stress taken care of already. And what attracted me to this course was a the clinical side of it. So it's in its name. We practice clinical skills like measuring blood pressure, taking ECGs. And um, in the lab, we once measured our own urine pH to see the effects of aspirin. And yeah. And what I've realized by talking with people outside our course is that we are at the center of it all. So a prime example of this was the pandemic with COVID-19. Um, we saw that clinical pharmacology was the bar bone of vaccine discovery and administration of it. It was very important that we were prescribing these vaccinations to patients in a safe and effective way. And this is something that we learn on a regular basis in this course. Um, so yeah, that's more of the hands-on side of clinical pharmacology. But for those of you who are quite entrepreneurial, we have Dragon's Den, as Effie mentioned. And this was actually one of my favorite days um, during this course. So Dragon's Den is essentially a competition between a couple of groups, and we will pitch a drug to a panel of dragons and a large audience saying why we need NHS funding for this particular drug and its effects on the disease. And from that, I think I kind of gained this confidence boost in my presentation skills, especially because leading up to Dragon's Den, we were always practicing presentations in front of our peers, but to do in front of a larger audience was really something. So I guess learning to apply that knowledge was very key in this course. Um, another highlight for me was my six week placement in industry in medical writing. So I was at a company called Niche and they specialize in medical writing. And for some context, um, we were all assigned to a placement during those six weeks. So some of us were in pharmaceutical companies like Takeda, some of us were in labs like AstraZeneca, and some were even at the St. George's Pharmacy, which is one of the largest pharmacies in London. And I guess it was very satisfying to see moments where we could apply that knowledge that we had learned during our course and be like, yes, I learned that in my lecture. Um, so I guess outside the course, um, there are so many different societies you can get involved in. Um, I recently took part in the Diwali show, so working backstage and in production. And I guess this gave me time to just set aside work and just have a bit of fun. <laughs> and 
I think as someone coming from outside London, I found that settling into tooting was very buzzing and energizing. There is really something about London that you can't find anywhere else. Um, there are lots of things to do in your free time. You can go down to Tooting Market or you can visit parks that are nearby. So we are quite connected to Wimbledon and Earlsfield. So these are nice places to visit in the summer. And yes, I think that is my overview. If there are any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Thank you so much, Diana. I, there are some questions in the chat. How about I read them to you? I think most of them are for you anyway. So yeah. one of our students, you replied in the chat, but maybe we can share it with the rest of the group, is asking what's the most interesting part of clinical pharmacology? Yeah, so I would say probably the clinical aspect of clinical pharmacology. So during the first and second years, we were in the lab quite a lot. Um, so in the first half of second year, we were all assigned to a lab project and we were given a supervisor and we were able to just try out different techniques that we wouldn't try out in our regular lab sessions and present these to our peers at the end of it, which was very nice. And there is another question that says, when did you first consider clinical pharmacology and what made you decide to study the course at St. George's? Good question. So before studying clinical pharmacology, I had the mindset of going into medicine, but then I discovered it um, on the website and it just kind of appealed to me because one, it was mentioned in 24 hours in a &E. It's the setting, <laughs> 24 hours at a &E. So that attracted me. And I kind of liked the whole business element of it as well. So there wasn't just the science, you had the entrepreneurial side like learning how to pitch drugs and find gaps in the market and see which patients need to be um, seen is another aspect of it. And I think we have a lot of our students that, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, that started with a mindset of going to medicine. They didn't get the grades perhaps or something happened and they didn't end up going there and they joined clinical pharmacology. And I think the majority of students, uh, I would say they never regretted it for joining here. I, I, I'm not sure if that is your experience as well, but yeah, this is us as teachers' agree. perspective. This is what we experience, that our students are happy. And when we did our um, questionnaires yeah. after students uh, leave, I find it very interesting that uh, a lot of them, uh, when they start, they say, I want to do medicine. And by the end of it, like you said before, um, a majority of these people have changed their mindset and they chose to go one of the other many alternate pathways that you can continue after uh, you con uh, you finished our course basically yeah it's best to keep an open mindset when you start this course and I think another thing that uh, attracts a lot of students to St. George is I think it's a very homey environment. Uh, uh, it's a small university, but it's embedded within a hospital. So you have close contact with the patients because you're doing healthcare sciences, but uh, the campus is quite uh, condensed in one building. So everything is around you. There is a lot of places and you get to meet a lot of students from other courses. And there is a huge amount of societies at St. George. So basically any type of sport or activity you like to do, but there's probably a society that you will be able to join. And I think that while some of the comments from our alumni students said when they continue to do other degrees and stuff, sometimes the campus is very vast. And he said, we don't know people anymore. We are more isolated than we were here. So I think when you join St. George's, you are part of a family because you end up knowing everybody around you, not just your teachers in the course and your fellow colleagues, but people from other courses and you know there is a close community I think and that is quite interesting especially if it's your first year away from home uh, I'm trying to see if we have any other questions in the chat Thank you. 
Diana, can, uh, Diana, can I ask you, what did you wish you had known before you joined this degree or you applied to the university? Is it something that surprised you and that you find out later on after you started, uh, after you started your studies? Mm, that's an interesting question. I guess I learned more about the degree itself when I joined the course. Just kind of meeting different people outside my course kind of reminded me how important our course was and the part, the role it played in the wider society and our current climate. I guess the pandemic make a huge impact on that, I suppose. Yeah. I think and, it really uh, emphasizes, yeah, you were going to say. Please. Yes, I think it also really emphasizes this idea of a multidisciplinary team. So you're kind of sharing out the jobs now. You don't have just one person doing it all. And also, um, what are you looking forward to the remainder of your degree? I know you have a bit more than a semester to, to go. So what are you uh, looking forward to your next step? Ooh, so currently we are leaning up towards another presentation on a novel drug that we will be pitching to our peers soon. And after that, we'll be having exams, which are always very fun. <laughs> and we also have, yeah. It's part of the module, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> are you so looking you forward to one. your advanced modules? Have you picked your top favorite ones? Yes, I'm very excited about that. So I have chosen fundamental science, pharmacodynamics and drugs in healthcare. So I've kind of avoided data and stats, but I'm more into the science, I guess. That is excellent. And for people that might be wondering, I just want to make a parenthesis here and highlight our uh, general admissions criteria. So you need to have A levels, you need to have three Bs, and one of your A levels should be either in biology or chemistry to join our degree. Our degree does not require uh, interviews, MMIs, yeah, which is you just need to submit your grades and so on through UCAS or others. And um, uh, if you're coming from abroad, uh, the English requirements are for courses type 2. That means you need to have a 6.5 overall with a 6.5 in writing and 6 on the rest components. I hope that uh, um, helps future students. If they, I mean, you can find all this information on our website, but uh, this is um, a very quick reminder of the entry criteria. Um, we, I don't see any other questions in the chat. We will remain in the chat a bit online, but we go, we can uh, wrap up the, uh, the video and the streaming here. Thank you all for joining us today and for uh, watching this live stream. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.